Welcome back. In this session, we are going to create an Azure Date Lake Storage Gen 2 account via the Azure portal. Just so you're aware, Azure Date Lake Storage Gen 2 is built on top of the standard storage account, but it provides additional features such as hierarchical namespace, fine-grained security, and compatibility with big data workloads. So it's more suited to be used as a data lake for big data analytics. We'll be following the same steps that we used in the last session to create the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account, except that we'll be enabling hierarchical namespace. Let's switch over to the Azure portal and get started with creating an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Here we are in the Azure portal. Come over to the top left menu and click Create a Resource. Now search for Storage Account and select Storage Account from here and click Create. Again, similar to what we did in the last session, pick your subscription. Mine is free. Let's pick the same resource group that we used previously, which is COVID Reporting Project RG. And we want to give a name for our storage account. So this time, I'm going to call this as COVID Reporting Project DL. But it looked like someone has already taken this name, that's why you are getting this error. So I will try to give another name, so let's give this time COVID Reporting Learn ADFDL. It looked like it is available, hence no error. The DL here represents that it's a data lake and COVID reporting is our project that we are using to learn Azure Data Factory, hence I written ADF. Let's pick a region. Again, I'm going to go with East US and let's stay with the performance tier as standard because that's sufficient for our course. And let's change the redundancy to locally redundant storage because that's, again, sufficient for our course. Let's click next to advance. And as you can see here, in order for our storage account to be a Date Lake Storage Gen 2 account, we need to enable hierarchical namespace. So we are going to enable that and we can accept the default for everything else. So let's click through networking, data protection encryption and tags. And let's click on review plus create. And the validations now succeeded. So let's click on create and that should create our storage account. And the deployment is now complete. It took about a minute to do the deployment. Let's click on go to resource to go to the storage account. This page is very similar to what we saw with the standard storage account. The one main difference you may notice is that we've got the properties of the data lake storage. Listed here with the hierarchical namespace being enabled, but with the standard storage account, you may have seen a blob service section here rather than the data lake storage section. That's the only difference between the two. Apart from that, everything else is the same. In order to access our containers, file shares, or queues, or tables, you can either access it from this section or go to the web UI version of the storage browser and go to the containers, file shares, queues, and tables from here. Or, as we did with the standard storage account, you can open the Azure Storage Explorer desktop version and then interact from here. Currently, it is not showing the Data Lake account. So let me refresh it once. So now, as you can see, we've got the new storage account, which is our data lake listed here, which is COVID reporting project learn ADFDL. And you can do everything you would normally do with a standard storage account from here as well. Let's now go back to the Azure portal and pin this service to our project dashboard so that it's there when we need it. So that is our COVID reporting project dashboard. And let me click on pin and that's now been added to the dashboard. So that's the end of this session. I'll see you in the next one.